hope is here. Okay, but this is just divine. Exquisite. New Hololive members are used to getting a warm welcome from the fans, but Iris, the newest member, received such an explosive outpouring of support that Twitter thought it was fishy and temporarily blocked her account. Don't get me mad. I can be scary when mad. <laughs> What makes the arrival of Iris so special, and what makes her different from the other Hololive English members? I'm Matrix, and in this video I'll be giving you a complete introduction to Iris, from her design and personality to her streaming habits. I've also invited my friend Waifu Theory to give her expert analysis of the lore in Iris's first music video, so stay tuned for that. <laughs> On July 6, the official Hololive English channel streamed a video with an 8-hour countdown, which many people speculated to be the announcement of Generation 2. It actually turned out, as some people correctly guessed, to be the reveal of a V-Singer, a separate position that Hololive put out a casting call for back in November 2020. I'll get more into what that means in a bit. The live stream ended with a shot of a double bar and repeat symbol used in music, which also was the first tweet made by Iris on her Twitter account. But the live stream created such a wave of hype within the community that Iris received tens of thousands of followers immediately, and about 20 minutes after her initial tweet, her Twitter and YouTube accounts were blocked due to excessive activity. The issue was fixed shortly thereafter, but it's safe to say that we've never seen this scale of support for a Hololive member before. Iris hit 500,000 YouTube subscribers in only 13 days. To put that into perspective, that's four days faster than Gura. As of July 25th, she was sitting at around 525,000 subscribers and 272,000 Twitter followers. It's it's not like it's not like I want to thank you or anything. <laughs> so now that we've covered how insanely successful Iris is, it's time to get into what's contributing to that success. The first thing you need to know about Iris is that she's a V-Singer, rather than being part of a traditional generation of Hololive. Essentially what that means is that her primary purpose with the company is to make music. A day after her debut stream, Iris dropped her first EP, called Sejura of Despair. A Sejura is a notation in either music or poetry that indicates a pause or break. Therefore, Iris's album is intended to be a break from despair because her goal is to bring hope to the world. That's another thing you'll notice about Iris. She talks about hope and despair more than your average Danganronpa character. Hope has descended. But I think that's a very fitting theme. The past year and a half has been incredibly difficult for everyone, and has put many people in a bad mental state. So I think the idea of bringing hope through music, especially as conditions start to improve in many places, is perfect. Iris's album includes four songs, each of which sounds like it could be an anime opening. The lyrics include a mix of English and Japanese, and as a side note, she also speaks both languages, and the songs are a mix of rock and electronic sounds. I think that the third song, Here Comes Hope, has the most unique sound. The guitar instrumentals are a little harder, and it sounds a bit like the band Myth and Royd without the autotune. I encourage you to give the EP a listen, as it's really incredible work. Iris is mostly self-taught when it comes to singing, too. I am like like 99% self-taught, if that makes sense. Iris has also been releasing covers of other Hololive members' songs in addition to her original work, so it looks like we'll see a wide variety of musical content from her. I find it funny how like, you know, in the internet world, when you, when people say thick, they always put like the T-H-I-C-C, -C. like what happened to the K? <laughs> now I want to transition into talking more about Iris's design and personality. Iris is a Nephilim or a half-angel, half-demon, though she's explicitly said she's not the child of Kanata and Toa from Hololive Japan. Iris has horns, a black and white design including a halo, and heterochromia in her eyes. With this description, you'd think she would be the edgiest character on the planet. But no, quite the opposite. Iris is actually one of the most soft-spoken and sweetest-sounding Hololive members. As for my age, well, as long as you've had hope in your heart, that is my age. <laughs> At the same time, she has a very strong presence, and you can really feel the passion she has for music and for her goal of bringing hope. She also has a lot of confidence, as evidenced by the fact that she didn't get outwardly flustered despite having technical difficulties immediately after starting her debut stream. In addition, Iris is quick to crack jokes, and she has an appreciation for puns similar to Nina My Inanis. Iris, it's Iris. 
Lots of VTubers have cute quirks that end up being part of their image, like Pecora's laugh or Kawaii Mori's guh. With Iris, one defining feature I've noticed is that when she's excited about something, she'll nod rapidly. This also accentuates her hair, which is an incredible multi-layered structure that has amazing physics. The last thing that I want to bring up about Iris' appearance is that I feel like she has a much more realistic aesthetic in terms of the way her face is structured and skin is shaded compared to the other Hololive English members. She has an appearance that really draws you in with its novelty. <laughs> okay, let me laugh my way up here. <laughs> okay, there we go. So now that I've talked about Iris' music and her design, I want to pass it over to my friend Waifu Theory for a segment that combines both, an analysis of the lore in Iris' first music video, after which I'll give you some final details about what to expect from Iris' streams. Take it away, Waifu Theory! Hey everyone, it's Waifu Theory here to introduce you to the lore of Iris and show you some things that aren't obvious. We'll start with her Sejura of Despair MV. So, we know from this MV that Iris is here to bring hope to the world. She has descended from above to revitalize the planet. The MV shows her cleansing and purifying her surroundings and fixing what is decaying and broken. This time, I'm not going to break down specific parts of the music video. It's clear how the images relate to the theme. She's standing on top of Tokyo tower and restoring the city to its former glory. The thing that stands out the most to me is that Iris is alone the whole time. Why is it that we see Abandon All Hope flash across the screen at the end of the music video? Didn't Iris just restore hope? Specifically, this is half of a quote from Dante's Inferno, Abandon All Hope, ye who enter here. This quote is inscribed on the gateway to hell. I believe the second half of the song explains why we see this. The lyrics of the second half, along with Iris' aloneness during the music video, makes it clear that the hope she brings is reserved for the rest of the world. What do I mean by that? Let's first examine this line. Time is running too fast and I'm left behind in solitude. She then follows it up later by stating that she is singing a nostalgic but sad song. The final pre-chorus of the song states Iris' loneliness most clearly. Her lamentation and regret is because once she has fulfilled her purpose, the people she is helping might not even acknowledge her. It's possible that they aren't aware of her existence or that Iris returns to slumber once she has fulfilled her purpose. This leaves her no time to form and experience personal connections. In general, I just really want to make a lot of friends. Yeah, being a Nephilim, it's really rare to see my own brethren. My own race, yes. I, I've never really met another Nephilim before, so it has been pretty, pretty, pretty lonely so far in life, but that's why I do want to make a lot of friends with this opportunity. Fejura of Despair is a song about bringing hope to others, but it is also about being personally neglected. The current era has brought about her second awakening, but she won't speak of the events that preceded it. Perhaps she faces forward because she doesn't want to believe that she will always remain alone. There's a brilliant irony about the situation. Iris' theme is not only hope, but also duality. She is left to despair and solitude, while the rest of the world gets to rejoice. Doesn't seem too fair, does it? Maybe she joined Hololive in an attempt to change things for herself the second time around. She can bring hope to people through VTubing, which allows her to both form connections with her peers and her audience. Like, hey, I've done a lot of good things for the world, here's your proof. Maybe I'd be pretty chill to hang out with. And she is, so give her streams a watch and see what she's about. Iris is a Nephilim, but the Nephilim in ancient religious texts were interpreted as either giants or as the union between angels and humans. The classification of Nephilim as part angel and part demon is a modern creation that appears in games like Diablo 3 and the 2013 remake of Devil May Cry. It makes sense that Iris is a younger form of Nephilim and appears in a modern setting. Finally, there's the mystery of her name. What is it? Well, it's likely rainbow. Why? Because the sensor blocks are outlined with a spectrum of colors and there are seven of them, meaning the word is likely seven letters long. The word rainbow also appears in her music video. Her body has clear crystalline features which create rainbows through a fraction of light. This has been Waifu Theory introducing you to Iris Lore. Feel free to leave a comment with your own thoughts about the lore. A huge thank you to Matrix AM for the opportunity to collaborate on his channel. You can find my channel in the description. Thank you for coming to my VTuber talk. Thank you very much for that insightful analysis, Waifu Theory. Now, the final big question to answer is, what can you expect from Iris' channel in the future? Well, a lot of different things. 
I initially expected Iris to stream less than the other Hollow EN members because of her V-Singer designation, but she streams on a regular basis. She has streamed 12 times between July 10th and July 25th, most of which have been gaming streams. Iris has played a variety of games so far, including two rhythm games, two FPS games, and a simulator. Incredibly, she's kept her soft and cheerful disposition through all of them, and she doesn't even get salty when she's stream sniped in Apex. She also seemed to get more flustered playing Mother Simulator than Doom. Ooh. Gross. Keep your guts to yourself. In addition to gaming streams, Iris has done singing, Q&A, and super chat reading streams, and she said that in the future she wants to try other types of streaming such as anime watchalongs and maybe even ASMR. All in all, if you want to watch a laid-back VTuber with exceptional singing skills, intriguing lore, and a wide variety of content on a regular basis, you should definitely check out Iris from Hololive English. Thanks for watching! If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing for weekly content, and don't forget to check out Waifu Theory from the link in the description and subscribe to her too. I'm Matrix from Matrix AM, Anime, and more, and I hope you have a great day.